Hello, it's Mary Jane here from Home for the Harvest and today I'm talking about growing strawberries indoors. Um, they're one of the easiest fruits to grow indoors. It's a fun project. Um, it's something you can do with kids, you can do it in the winter when there's snow out in the garden. Uh, it's just a really fun indoor edible gardening project. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can actually start your plants from seeds. Um, it definitely takes a lot longer. <laughs> um, or you can buy a start, like a little seedling type plant. Um, so these are usually just coming off of runners of other plants from the nursery and they pot them up. And then you can take them home and pot them up in your kitchen. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got our strawberry plant, got some potting soil. Uh, water, organic fertilizer, a bowl that I want to plant them in, um, and I've got a mixing bowl on this spoon, uh, just because I like to pre-mix the soil. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do first. Um, I like to put just like a slow release organic fertilizer into the soil and then just pre-moisten it and get the soil all ready before I do the planting. So I start with the organic fertilizer, read the instructions. Um, I think there's two, for the size of container I'm doing, it's like two tablespoons, um, but every fertilizer is different, so uh, definitely read the instructions. Um, I just like to mix mine into the soil. Yeah, so this is just a slow release granular fertilizer. And then, I just add like a little bit of water just to moisten the soil up. Just because in the kitchen, like if you have really dry potting soil, it can go and make a big dust mess. So I don't love that. So my goal here is not to make mud, obviously. <laughs> It'd be a mess too. Uh, it's just to kind of make the soil into little, um, little friable bits instead of a dusty cloud of mess. Okay, so it's starting to look not so much like a dusty cloud of mess. Um, so I'm happy with that. It will, when you water it again in the container, the, the soil does kind of sink down a little bit. So um, it's interesting to see how much potting soil changes with the amount of water <laughs> you pour in. Uh, what I'm using for potting soil is just a mixture of, you can use peat moss or coconut coir depending on what you live and what your preference is. Um, but I like to put a lot of perlite in it. Perlite is really helpful for drainage and keeping air in the soil. Um, I am actually gonna use a container that doesn't have drainage holes, which is like a total no-no because of overwatering, right? So. You can use a container that doesn't have holes. Um, you either just have to drill holes in it or commit to not overwatering and use use a good potting soil um, that's going to have something like perlite in it for for air and drainage. So I'm going to plant them in this bowl because I want to have them right here by the kitchen window and I don't want them leaking. Like like look at this. This is already leaking, right? So I don't want that leaking. Um, water all over my windowsill. So um, I'm going to use this bowl here that will fit right under the windowsill and not cause too much of a mess. But if you use something without holes in it, don't overwater. Um, if you water it so much and you see that there's ponding water, that's too much. Pour some of it out. <laughs> hey, it's time to get planting. Um, so the soil mix is ready. Um, perlite, peat moss or coconut coir, little bit of slow release organic fertilizer and some water. That's ready, we've got our plant ready. Um, you've picked your container, either you, sent, you have something with drainage holes um, and you're gonna put a plate under it or something, uh, or you're, you're gonna commit to not overwatering and use a high quality potting soil that's got perlite uh, or something similar in it. Uh, I like to put a little bit of soil on the bottom first, just because I've used this um, bowl to plant before. And I know that it's just a little bit deeper than the average nursery plant pot. Um, strawberries, you don't want to plant too deep. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second here. Um, but yeah, I just like to put some soil on the bottom of the bowl. Um, so 
Yeah, you turn the planter upside down and I like to squeeze the sides really gently. And we've got um, fingers on either side of the plant here. And I'm just squeezing and it comes out. Ah! So you can see not quite all the soil came out, that's fine. Um, you can see the roots. So carefully transferring it. If some of the soil falls away from the, the plant, that's fine. Um, we just want to be really gentle <laughs> with the whole thing. So I'm going to put mine in the middle of this bowl. Um, this is actually really tall for this bowl. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see. This one is going to make a ton of runners, which is good or bad, depending on what you want in indoors. Um, alpine strawberries will make very few runners, and I've grown those indoors before. Like for years and they make one or two runners it's amazing this is just a regular garden strawberry um i think i'll put the name up on the screen <laughs> um and uh it's gonna make a ton of runners um which i love because i can just pot them up and then give them to friends uh, or put them out uh for free on the sidewalk in the little wagon and i love it um okay. so we've got our strawberry plant in here i want to make sure i know where the crown is so if I just lift the plant actually out, um, I want to be really gentle with it, but you can see where the green leaves are meeting the roots. So I'll just bring this up to where you can see it. So I would like everything that's green to be above the soil and everything that's not green to be below the soil pretty much. So I want the soil line to be right where my finger, finger nail is pointing. So I think I need a little bit more soil under it actually. So I feel better about the height that it's at now. It's a little sitting a little bit higher. I don't want to bury any of that green stem. I want all the green stem to be um, up in the air. I don't want it to be below the soil. So I can just backfill now. You can do this like if you have a deck, you can do this on the deck and it won't make such a mess. Um, or well, if you don't care about the mess so much. Um, but it is totally fine to do this inside. Just clear your space first. A fun, even a fun little science project to do with kids. Um, keep them busy on an inside day. I'm just carefully tamping down the potting mix. Um, and you don't have to be too terribly fussy doing this either, which is nice. Strawberry plants are really hardy. Um, they're really hardy, they put up with a lot. Um, and if for some reason it doesn't make it, it's pretty easy to find some new ones. So that's always reassuring. So just making sure that the crown of the plant that where the leaves meet the roots is right at the soil line. Not too deep, not too high. I do find that potting mix, even when you pre-moisten it like this, it is going to like sink a little bit. So um, either have more on hand or just err on the side of a little bit too much potting mix. You can always pull it away from the root towards the side um, if you have a bigger bowl or planter that you're planting it in. Okay, uh, and I do like to just water it again. Yeah, so I like, I like where it's sitting. I think it's going to be perfect like this. Um, that's I think most of the problems I've had with indoor plants is because I've given them too much water. Uh, so, and these are definitely 
a plant that likes to dry out um, a little bit. So, I mean, I don't let it turn into like a dry sponge, um, but I do let the soil dry out a little bit. I'm not watering it every day. Um, what else about indoor strawberries? Oh, pollination. Boop. Pollination. Uh, I've grown strawberries indoors and I haven't thought a bit about pollination and the plants have grown berries and it's been totally fine. Um, but you can help the pollination. Uh, outside there's bees and bugs, you know, crawling all over the flowers, helping move the pollen from the outside bit of the flower, the outside bit of the center of the flower to the inside bit. How will strawberry flowers look? I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see. But um, there's outside yellow things that look like little, like tiny little balloons sticking up, um, or like lollipops sticking up. And then there's the inside bit that's cone shaped. Um, and it has, it looks like a, yeah, like a cone shaped hairbrush, cone shaped hairbrush or something. Um, the goal is to move the pollen from the outside bits the little balloon things <laughs> into the middle hairbrush thing. Does that make any sense? Anyway, um, so to do that, uh, make a brush, paintbrush, probably use a Q-tip, um, and you just want to gently brush the outside pollen bits to the inside that's going to be the berry. And it's so fun to watch this. If you put it somewhere, you see it a lot. It's, it's so fun to watch the berry forming out of the flower. Um, so this can just help. I, again, it's not totally necessary. You'll just get fewer berries or some of the berries might be weirdly shaped. Um, but if you really make sure that you're getting every single one of those little hairs on the hairbrush with, with pollen on it, then you're gonna maximize your berry pollination. Uh, yeah, so definitely much faster to grow from a plant. If you grow from seeds, it might be six months before you get berries that you're harvesting. So I, I do like to just take a runner from another plant, uh, get one from the nursery. And I, I, I don't mind growing plants indoors with runners um, because yeah, you can always clip them off, pot them up and give them to a friend. Uh, and they also look really pretty, um, kind of cascading over. I usually use a taller container and so they kind of hang over. I have a, I have a cake stand actually. Ooh. I think I'll put it on the cake stand and hopefully it just runs right over the, uh, the side. I think that'll be really pretty. So it'll also be fun. So uh, that's how I grow strawberries indoors. Um, let me know in the comments if you grow strawberries indoors, what kinds you grow. Um, I'll also put a link on my site of the article that I list my favorite tastiest kind of strawberries. Um, there's actually a lot of different kinds of strawberries and um, some of them are tastier than others. So my favorites are listed there and I'll put that in the description. And if you like this video, I would love it if you subscribe. There is a red button around here uh, and that would be wonderful or just click the thumbs up and then I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much, bye.